Welcome to Worship for Sunday, May 26, 2024. It is Trinity Sunday and Memorial Day weekend this week. So we celebrate both of those occasions. We have two scripture passages for today. The first is Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. Hear God's word for you. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two, they covered their faces. With two, they covered their feet. And with two, they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. The second reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verses 1 through 17. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh. What is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet You do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Here ends this reading. May God bless it to our understanding. The reading from Isaiah begins with Holy, Holy, Holy. Lord God Almighty. This is a suggested reading for Trinity Sunday every third year because of the threefold repetition of holy, 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 holy. This is one of the few, one of the Old Testament phrases that often ties to the Trinity. Uh, Holy, 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 God in three persons. The scripture reminds us that throughout time, God has come to God's people in a variety of ways, reaching us and calling us to service. God calls us to go where God sends us, like the prophet in the scripture. We have a job to do. 
for God, even when we don't feel worthy, as the prophet did not feel worthy. Even then, God makes us able. The scripture reminds us that it is not about us. It is about God's glory in Jesus Christ. God can work miracles through us. Anywhere, anytime, God's Spirit moves through us and calls us to serve God, to follow Jesus, and to care for others. We are invited to respond with the prophet, here am I, send me. Today, as May ends, this week as May ends, uh, as summer begins, we think about endings and beginnings. We are invited to begin something new as summer stretches out before us. Uh, it is the perfect time to think about a new way to serve Jesus, a new way to, to draw closer to God, a new way to invite others into God's love and mercy. Summer is a perfect time to try something new, uh, to grow in God's grace, to serve God in some new way. Think about the season ahead, uh, the months ahead, and how God is calling you to serve. God says to you, as with the prophet, whom shall I send and who will go for me? And we can answer, answer today, here am I, send me. The second scripture for today is another call story. Uh, we are invited alongside Nicodemus to be born again, to be born from above, as the translations vary a little bit. That phrase, to be born again, is familiar in our world, uh, and it means different things in different traditions. For Presbyterians, being born again is about renewal and life. We are born anew into Jesus Christ, into life in Jesus Christ. We renew our commitment to God uh, through Jesus Christ. We begin our life recognizing Jesus as Savior and Lord. The Greek translation is both born again, but also might also be born from above, as this translation that we heard today says, born from God, born from heaven, born out of the love of God in Jesus Christ, born out of the breath of God, the spirit of God, as it says, the spirit of God that is breathed over us and into us at Pentecost, born as a child of God who belongs to God and lives for God, born again. We are given this gift of renewal once, once, for all time, through the action of Jesus. But we can experience this renewal every single day, every single breath we take. We can experience the grace of God. We are, in fact, renewed by God every single moment as we connect to God, as we serve Jesus in the power of the Holy Spirit. For, for some, there is maybe a specific time in your life, a, a time of powerful change in your life that, that recognizes this ongoing presence of God, maybe even perhaps a, a conversion experience or, or a dedication or rededication, born again. For others of us, uh, these moments abound throughout life, and they grow throughout our lives with many points of recognition that God is in our lives, that God is with us, that God loves us, that God calls us, that we trust God. Uh, God has always been a part of our lives, and we are grateful, born again. The Gospel reading from John is one of our favorites although we don't always read the whole chapter or, or half the chapter as I did today, uh, when we refer to the verse John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, and so on. The context of the visit between Jesus and Nicodemus adds great depth 
and insight to this wonderful verse about God's love for the whole world and the salvation that Jesus gives. The context is a good man, Nicodemus, searching for truth, searching for guidance in, in how to live his life. By all judgments of the day, Nicodemus was a very successful, very good man, wealthy, educated, powerful in his communities, respected, trying to learn and grow, trying to do the right thing. Yet he comes to Jesus because Nicodemus knows that there is more to life than all of those accolades, more to life than money or fame or popularity or politics or intelligence or success. There is more to life. Nicodemus is searching for that something more. Nicodemus wants to understand. Nicodemus wants to know God. Though his life is good, Nicodemus thinks maybe something is missing. And Jesus puts his finger on it immediately. You must be born from above, born from God. How you live must come from God. When your values are centered in this world, no matter how virtuous those values may be, it is not enough. If God is your center, you will find what you seek. You will have everything you need. If God is the center of your life, if, if, if all you seek comes from God, if, if what you value are the gifts of God, you will have an abundant life. You must be born again, born from God. Your, your life values must come directly from God. You must belong to God. For only in God will we have all that we need, everything that we need. Only in God will we live in true love. For God so loved the world that God came in Jesus Christ to save us, to redeem us, to show us how to live in that love forever. Nicodemus came looking for something and Jesus said, you must change everything. Every part of your life, every moment of every day, every breath you take must belong to God. Jesus offered Nicodemus a new life, a, a new beginning. Jesus said, you, you may start over today. From this moment on, put your life in God's hands. Jesus offers you and me the same thing, the very same thing. All of us together, put your life in God's hands. From this moment on, and for all of your life, put your life in God's hands. Jesus says it is a time for new beginnings, new life in Christ. By God's Spirit, that gift is yours right here and right now, today and forever. You may be born again. You may respond, here am I, send me. Now, I don't know where you are in your life. Most of us are in pretty good shape, pretty good place. Uh, we may face challenges, but we know our lives are blessed. We know that God loves us. We try to serve Jesus faithfully. Some of you may not, may be in need of change, may, may, may not be as, as good a place as others. But all of us know there are some things that we could change. No matter where we are in life, we know there are some things we could change. There are some things I try to control rather than giving completely to God, putting in God's hands. There are some areas of my life where I need a fresh start, a new beginning, worrying less, trusting more. Maybe you can think of concrete examples in your life of things that need change. The scripture for today reminds us that God offers us new beginnings every single day. Every day. It may not be angels coming and touching your tongue with fire, like the reading from Isaiah, or, or a voice 
speaking to you from heaven. It may not be that. Your new beginning may be as gentle as, as a slow, deep breath. The word of Jesus reminding you, you are loved. You are loved. The call of Jesus reminding you to step out in faith. Try something new. Take a deep breath right now. Breathe in. Breathe out. And hear that voice of love. And breathe in that new life that Jesus pours over you, offers to you. So here's our invitation on this Trinity Sunday, on this Memorial Day weekend. Here is our invitation as, as summer begins. As you take a breath, as you think about what really matters, receive God's gift of grace for, for a new day dawning. Today, tomorrow, whenever you are able, you may begin anew. Set aside anything that blocks you or blocks your way to God. Anything that holds you back or keeps you down, set it aside. That, that might be worry or fear or overwork or stress, set it aside. That might be the expectations of the world or your own demands upon yourself, set it aside. That might be, might be something more serious, something that separates you from God in any way, some sin that grips you, some problem that punishes you. Set it aside. Jesus invites you today to set it aside. Give your burdens and your barriers to Jesus. God will take them. You may be born again, born anew, born from God. Because, because of God's love, you may start over. You belong to God, and God's grace will sustain you. Receive God's gift of grace today. Breathe in God's spirit of life. Hear Jesus' word of love today. Your life is in God's hands. Your life belongs to God. You are born again. And all that you are, all that you do, belongs to God and, and is blessed by God. So go out this day. Go out filled with the grace that you have been given, sharing the gifts that you have received, and loving others as God has so fully loved you. Go out in the grace of Jesus Christ and in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.